All right, so here we're going to continue our discussion on the lysosomal storage disorders. And here we're going to go over the mucopolysaccharidoses. Now, the nice thing about this is that there's no biochemical pathway that you need to memorize. Unlike the sphingolipidoses, where you've got a biochemical pathway, you've got to memorize a lot of different enzymes, you've got to remember uh, the products that build up, and then there's six or seven diseases that you need to be aware of. For this, there's only two. There's no biochemical pathway that you need to remember. For the most part, you need to understand the manifestations of these disorders, how to distinguish the two, the enzymes that are involved, and that's pretty much it. So this is fairly straightforward stuff here. Now, there are two disorders, Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. They have a lot in common. Uh, the major differences are what the USMLE is going to hammer on. So before we go over these disorders, let's just briefly talk about what mucopolysaccharides are. Mucopolysaccharides are also known as glycosaminoglycans. There are several of them, uh, but what they really are are very highly polar polysaccharides that exist within connective tissue. So we're talking bone and cartilage and uh, uh, the connective tissue on heart valves. Uh, and so when these are, uh, when they build up, they cause defects of those tissues. Uh, and so that's really where the manifestations are going to be. So first of all, what do Hurler and Hunter syndrome have in common? Well, the major thing is these, uh, the, this facial, I don't know if you want to call it a defect, but uh, this, these facial manifestations that show up in children. And this is called gargoyalism. Now, gargoyalism is kind of an outdated term, but I included it here because it kind of helps you remember uh, how this looks. Now, another way to think of it is that the facial appearance of these patients bears a striking resemblance to the facial appearance of adults who have acromegaly. Now, it's a complete that's a completely different disorder with a com very very different. Uh, pathophysiology, but the appearance is pretty similar. So we're talking here about frontal bossing. We're talking about very prominent facial bones. Uh, there's a flattened nasal bridge, hypertellerism, and macroglossia, or an enlarged tongue. So some of those things you see in acromegaly, and you'll see this in a child gradually developing, although it can be present at birth, but developing over the course of childhood. Now, we would not see acromegaly in children. We would see that in adults, but you see some of, some of the similar features. Now, another thing um, that you're going to see that these two have in common is the collection of mucopolysaccharides because we're unable to degrade them. And so those mucopolysaccharides are chiefly heparan sulfate and dermatan sulfate. So those are the two things that these disorders have in common. Now, what is different? Well, for Hurler syndrome, it's a little bit uh, more severe as far as the gargoyalism goes. Um, they're going to have also corneal clouding. Now, that's just due to the fact that in the cornea are mucopolysaccharides. So because it's a little bit more severe, uh, they have ocular manifestations. You can also get hepatosplenomegaly with Hurler syndrome, and because of the more severe facial uh, issues, uh, you can get airway obstruction. The enzyme that's deficient in Hurler syndrome is called alpha l iduronidase And the way I remember this is simply that Hurler syndrome has an L in it, and so does alpha l iduronidase Hurler syndrome is inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion. We're going to see that that's different from Hunter syndrome. 
Now, Hunter syndrome is really just a mild version of Hurler syndrome. So you'll see that gargoyleism, but it may be a little less prominent. What you'll really see with Hunter syndrome is that gargoyleism, but also aggressive behavior. And we're not exactly sure why that happens, uh, but they tend to have aggressive behavior. What they don't have is that corneal clouding. So the way that people tend to remember that is that hunters are often men, and so it's X-linked, and so that will tend to be in boys. Hunters have to be able to see their target, and so they don't have corneal clouding, and hunters shoot, and that's kind of an aggressive action, right? So that's hunter syndrome. And so really that's it. Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome, those are the two mucopolysaccharidoses. Remember that heparan sulfate and dermatan sulfate, which are mucopolysaccharides, will accumulate. And then remember that Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome both have gargoyleism, which looks a lot like acromegaly in the face. Hurler syndrome will have corneal clouding and hepatosplenomegaly, whereas Hunter syndrome will have normalized but aggressive behavior. And that's really it for the mucopolysaccharidoses.